background noise suppression in Microsoft Teams meetings. Now, there's no quicker way to kill the engagement and the attention of people inside of a Microsoft Teams meeting than there for, to be loads of background noise, whether it's barking dogs, screaming kids as you're working from home, or if you're working in a shared space and you can hear other people's calls. Um, maybe there's banging and clattering because you're working on in an area which is under construction, whatever it is, there's nothing worse than background noise. So I'm gonna show you how we can control the audio settings of a Microsoft Teams meeting to control this. So inside of our Microsoft Teams meeting, you've got this more tab across the top. By clicking on that, you'll see that we've got this audio settings option. So the audio settings is where we can control a number of different features related to the audio of this Teams meeting. Um, now, the very first option is the speaker. So what speaker are you going to be using? Now, I've got a couple of different things plugged in at the moment, so I've got a couple of different options. You might just have the one, um, which is your laptop. If you've got headsets or you've got other types of things, that will show up under here. You can choose the volume. So say, for example, if I was to select, I wanted this to come out of um, my, my plugged in kind of speakers, I can then choose what I want the audio volume to be. So rather than changing the volume on my actual computer, I can choose to change the volume of it from Microsoft Teams meeting settings. Then I've got my microphone. Now, of course, because I'm recording YouTube videos, I've got the Yeti stereo microphone plugged in. Um, now, because actually I don't want this to conflict with uh, the recording, I've got it turned off. So actually, I, I don't actually have any audio coming through the Teams meeting itself because I'm recording this meeting at the same time. So I don't want it to conflict. Um, whereas actually in, in real life, what we would want if this was a real Teams meeting is that I should see that this um, speaker, that this, this microphone bar is going up and down. As I'm talking, I should see it moving backwards and forwards, which is a great way to test that other people in the meeting will actually be able to hear me. So if you're ever in a position where someone's saying, oh, um, I can't hear you, can you hear me? Which everybody's been there in a, in a Teams meeting. This is where you'd go to check those settings to make sure that the audio is coming through the right speaker, but also the microphone, what you are speaking through is actually what you're uh, anticipating it. And actually quite often, another kind of issue that I've seen in Teams meetings is people saying, oh, I can hear you, but you sound really tinny or you sound really far away or something like that, even though they've got their kind of headset down and things like that. And that's usually because the microphone is picking up the computer or their laptop or something like that, which is further away than, than, than what they are. So they sound like they're, they're in a tunnel or something like that. And actually, if they go into here, they'll go, oh, it, it, the microphone's not selected my headset automatically. And then they need to go and select that particular um, sort of microphone to make sure that that actually comes through uh, for people to hear them. Now, this brings me on to the more the kind of advanced audio settings, which is what we were talking about at the beginning, which is making sure um, that, that other people do not hear background noise and things like that. Now, I suppose what it would be nice in the UI is that if there's some way kind of saying that these features are almost really for, for, for us as a personal, um, that these are going to benefit us, the speaker, what audio is coming through, and I suppose to a certain extent, the microphone of, of how other people are hearing us and things like that. But almost like these settings then are for other people. So um, we have spatial audio, which actually oops, is described as enable this experience audio to come from where the person speaking is positioned on your screen. Works well with together mode, gallery and speaker view, not available on wireless headphones yet. So what this is trying to do is if this is only really for again very large meetings as you can see at the moment i'm currently in the together mode um and essentially if it was a very large meeting you can make it almost sound like the audio is coming from different areas but to be honest with you that's again it's under the advanced settings for a reason not everyone's necessarily going to use that it's not as important as the next one, which is the noise suppression. This is, as I say, a fantastic way to boost the engagement of your Microsoft Teams meetings to make sure you've got this noise suppression activated. And that just means then Microsoft Teams is very good at then picking out and filtering out the kind of background noise. As I say, construction, people hammering, drilling, cars beeping, dogs barking, whatever it is, use the noise suppression to turn that off. Now, there's two options that you have underneath this. 
this is almost taking this to the next advanced layer. We have background noise only. Now this is described as enable this to enhance your microphone audio quality by removing background noise. Now this is the kind of the entry level to noise suppression. I would turn that on um, for, for everything. Just, just have that enabled for all of your team's meetings. It's gonna make it way better. It's gonna not drive people wild. And it's actually gonna to add to your kind of authoritative kind of sound and trust inside of Teams meetings that you have something that sounds much more professional. Then we have what we call voice isolation. Now this um, is described as isolate your voice from background noise and other voices while speaking. Only your voice is audible. Voice profile is required to use without headset. Now, what this is doing, this is quite clever. This is basically where you can upload a profile of your voice now, this is actually a setting that isn't in the Teams meeting. You have to get to this via, just go into the Teams desktop app, and I think it's in the top kind of where your profile picture is. Click on that, and then it's in the settings there, you will find voice profile. Now, voice profile, it doesn't take long to set up. Literally, it's like 30 seconds. What happens is it will, um, I keep looking down here, but actually my camera's up here. Um, what will happen is there'll be like a little bit of text that will come up on screen, which it would just be random text or like a little blurb of a story or something like that. And it would just ask you to say, um, the man walked down the road, it was a busy road on a blah, blah, blah. Some dummy text, it's different for everybody. Now, what that's actually doing is it's profiling your voice to understand what you sound like. And then also what you can do is if you wanted to, you don't have to do this bit, you can also provide a face profile as well. Now, the face profile is useful for if you are inside of a, this is a bit more advanced, but a meeting space, like a physical meeting space, which has a webcam, which has got the kind of Teams meeting plugged into it, and it can actually recognize you from a profile picture, so it knows who's kind of speaking at given points in time. Now, um, the voice isolation, as I say, it picks up on that profile, so it knows you, so it means then when you come back into this particular Teams meeting and you select that setting, it knows when you're talking, it's matching it against the voice profile. So say for example, you're in a call center or a busy office and you have someone sat next to you which is also talking, it knows your voice profile and it knows that this is Dougie Wood, this is Dougie Wood talking or this is Joe Bloggs next to me and he's talking and it doesn't recognize it, but recognize his voice because it's not my profile. So it's not going to, to almost transmit that audio of him speaking next to me. Although my microphone picked it up, it's not going to end up in the team's meeting because it doesn't match my voice profile. So I think this is a fantastic feature. I would definitely get your voice profile set up and get this feature enabled. There's some other kind of features down here, but again, I don't, I'm not really gonna go into them because I don't see them used all that often, but um, you can basically enter this music mode, which is essentially recommended for when you play music in meetings. If enabled, this enhances experience for the team participants when they listen to shared music. And then you've got a couple of options like display in, display in the microphone drop-down menu, enable echo cancellation. So those features are more for if, you, if you're kind of presenting with a lot of music and things like that. Um, I have seen people, especially in enterprise companies, doing this. Um, but to be honest with you, if you're gonna take anything away from this particular um, segment of the video, I would suggest that you really look at this kind of voice isolation, setting up your voice profile, and making sure your noise suppression is always turned on.